I've had some huge technical difficulties. It's taken me for hours to get things set up today. I can't believe how long it's taken me to get this video rolling. I've probably been working at it for the last two and a half hours. Something wrong with my SD cards and my camera. I'm getting errors and all this kind of stuff. But I'm here. I'm here making another video for you. You know why I'm here? Because I believe that people can get sobriety and have a great life without the use of drug or alcohol on a daily basis. That's what I believe because I am living proof of that. I've done it for many of years and so can you one day at a time. So can you, okay? In this video today, I want to talk about something that people have in recovery. And we have it to an extent that it causes us difficulties. People in addiction from drugs, people recovering from alcoholism or during their alcoholism, people who have suffered like I have from a traumatic uh, childhood, you know, abusive, a little bit of neglect going on, not by my parents' fault, you know, just life in general. I don't want to get into it. My dad was an alcoholic. My mother was suffering from an abusive alcoholic living in the house. So there's no more to give there, right, to the kids. So it was problems in my house. And we all have it. We all have it. In Alcoholics Anonymous, our founder, Bill W., says we have it to the extreme. And I'm talking about thinking about ourselves all the time. But Bill W. describes it as self-centeredness to the extreme. Yeah, that's what we have. Self-centeredness to the extreme. And you're probably saying to yourself, you know, Terry G., what do you mean by that? Basically, you think about yourself all the time. You probably think about yourself probably 22 hours of the day or what a 20 hour, whatever you're up. I don't think you're up 22 hours, but you think about yourself more often than you should, you really. And alcoholics or people in addiction come by it honestly. We really do. Because if you had an abusive childhood, you always had to sort of fend for yourself and think about yourself and think about your security. When we in take it my example, I moved into addiction at 13 years old. So I still had to think about my housing. I had to think about uh, my finances at a very young age, right? Like I'm 16, 17 years old, I was on my own, living on my own, you know, being responsible. I couldn't even run my own life. So everything was about me all the time. I was always living in fear. I was always panic stricken. I was, I was worried about my next paycheck, food, housing, lodging, you know, people getting in conflict with people because of my alcoholism, you know, not feeling wanted from people, places and things because of my alcoholism, my drug addiction. I was always in this mode of thinking about myself, making sure my needs were met all the time. And alcoholics come by that innocently. Even if you're not a, you know, a street alcoholic, if you're just living in a house, you're a hybrid alcoholic, you still think about those things. But for me, I was a low bottom alcoholic and I had huge problems. So most of the days when I drank, I was always in survival mode or thinking about myself. Where am I gonna get the next drink? Am I gonna have enough money to drink? Gee, I'm hung over. I didn't sleep very well last night. All those things that my girlfriend doesn't like me. I didn't show up last night. You know, on and on and on and on and on. Always kind of like on guard, self-centeredness thinking. Always thinking about myself and using the booze and the drugs to soothe that, to relax me, to calm me down. Give me a break from myself. Give me a break from my overthinking of my fears. This self-centeredness took over, always took over. And I, and I describe it as kind of like a demon because it kind of is. Because when we come into alcohol, we come into recovery, we carry this self-centeredness with us because like I said, we come by it innocently. We become self-absorbed. Everything has to do with us. Everything. Oh, my, my employer doesn't talk to me. He must be mad at me. He must be mad at me. He's not talking to me today. My girlfriend hasn't phoned me. Something wrong with me. Something wrong with me. Uh, I don't have a job. I'm going to go hungry. I don't have a job. I'm not going to pay my bills. And that's, a, that's a, a good thing too, right? Like a proper way of thinking but we take it to the extreme. We take it to the extreme. That person over there has got better recovery than me. Pound away at my self-worth. Something negative happens in my life. Something like my neighbor up at the cottage is giving me a run for my money when it comes to my property, lane, line, property lines. I think about myself. 
it triggers a character defect, anger. Because I'm thinking about myself. It's not that I have to think about them, but I have to think about a way to get it away from myself. Self-centeredness to the extreme is a really, really flaw that I had and I have to work on. When something negative in my life is happening, when something stressful in my life is happening, how I get self-centered. I go into myself and I think about myself in overdrive. And that creates a very self-centered point of view. I start looking at life to meet my needs, to soothe my fears, to ease my pain. That's what I try and do. And, and that's okay, right? That's okay, but not to my extent. Not to my extent. Like I say, self-centeredness or overthinking can trigger character defects. It can trigger my greed. I'm not gonna have enough money. I just looked at my paycheck. I'm not gonna have enough money to pay my bills. I'm not paying for dinner when I go out with my, with my sweetheart. She never pays for dinner. Triggers anger, character defect. Triggers jealousy. People have better off than I, they have better jobs. They make more money, live in bigger houses. Thinking about myself is a direct correlation to triggering my character defects. They really are. Like I said, in Alcoholics Anonymous, they say alcoholics are self-centered to the extreme. And it also says that most of the problem with alcoholics is in our mind, is the way we think. And that's where most of the self-centeredness comes from. Most of that overthinking, thinking about ourselves when there's a crisis, when we're stressed, that's where it comes from. And what is the, what do we do for that kind of stuff? What do we do for that? Well, if you go to meetings and you listen, and you know, maybe you have a sponsor, they'll tell you to get active in the program, get active in your life. And the reason they tell you that is not because you're lazy. <laughs> maybe you are lazy. I was pretty lazy in recovery. It's because we know, and through you know, trial and error, that being active in your life helps relieve you of self-centeredness, chairing a meeting, helping another alcoholic who's suffering, volunteering in your community, helping out your neighbor. Thinking about somebody else helps us think about ourselves less. That's why it's imperative or it's very important for us to get active and help people. Give somebody a ride home from the meeting, talk to them, chat them up, buy them a coffee, do something for somebody else. Think about someone else, put yourself in somebody else's shoes and it'll relieve you of self especially when there's your life is troubled what do they always say in a you got, life is going good go to a meeting life is going bad go to a meeting the reason they say that is because it keeps us away from ourselves. it keeps us less self-centered there's another way of doing it and that's mindfulness the monks have been doing it for years right they spend decades in temples trying to Get rid of self, trying to get rid of that self-centeredness, nothingness, trying to enter that nothingness, enlightenment, so, you know, mindfulness, do that kind of stuff. Go to the gym, we've heard about that a thousand times, going to the gym. We always hear about that. Exercise is always number one for everything. It's a cure-all for everything. And it really is, it really helps. And the one for myself that I use is spirituality. Have a creator, have an image of God that helps me get away from myself helps me take the self-centeredness off me because I can get it bad. I can get it bad, especially if I think about the future. Am I gonna have enough? Am I gonna be healthy? A self-centeredness you know, creeps in and it's really inappropriate, it's damaging and it really doesn't exist. But that self-centeredness can trigger and all of a sudden the fear gets triggered and all of a sudden my defects of character come into it. All kinds of that kind of stuff. All that negativity comes into it. So when I feel like that, or I feel like I'm in trouble at work, or there's a stressful moment, something's happening negative to me, that spirituality comes into play and helps me take it off me and helps me let it go and just say to myself, you know, Terry, just step aside and just let things go and see how it turns out. See how life unfolds without you getting involved, without you saying something, without you playing a role in it. Just let it be. It only exists in your head. It only exists in the self-centered world. It doesn't really, nothing's really happening. You just think it's happening. 
You know, that's the way it is, right? Because I'm thinking about myself. I'm thinking about my safety. It's the ego. It's whatever it is. It's all that kind of stuff playing on us. And it kind of just kicks in automatically, doesn't it? So self-centeredness is really important. So when you're driving down the road and you're thinking about yourself and it's making you feel rotten, it's probably self-centeredness. It's overthinking, thinking about ourselves, really. And I, I do that. I think about myself a lot sometimes, especially when I'm tired, hungry, angry, lonely, when I feel afraid, when life gets stressful, when things aren't going my way. That's a big one. I think about me. What about me? What about me? What about me? me? Self-centeredness. That's what it is. It's self-centeredness. It can cause a lot of difficulties in your sobriety. So help other people. Practice mindfulness. Get out of yourself. Listen to what people have to say. And stop thinking that you have to respond. Just listen to them. A big part of communication is listening. And walk in somebody else's shoes. Get away from yourself. Let life be. Quit being so like codependent or thinking all roads lead to me. All roads lead to Terry G. Everything has to do with me. Well, that's self-centeredness. It really, really is, isn't it? So be aware of that. It can cause difficulties. Look up in the dictionary what self-centeredness is. And 10 times that definition because that's an alcoholic that's an addictive alcoholic or somebody suffering from addiction or has trauma and we need to learn to stop doing that we learn to we need to learn to stop always thinking about ourselves so much we need to get relief it creates depression it can give you headaches it can make you tired it can do all that sort of thing we need to feel lighter about ourselves that we are not so important and don't take things so personally because it's not personal it's just that we're self-centered. It has nothing to do with us a lot of times. And self-centeredness will close your ears and open your mouth and you'll get in a fight. That's what I always do, I get angry. I think, I feel threatened. And that's another thing that self-centeredness causes in my life, okay? I hope you found this video uh, beneficial. If you did, leave a comment below, okay? Because self-centeredness is a root of a lot of difficulty in people in addiction. And people have had traumatic lives that self-centeredness is a soul sickness. It can cause lots of difficulties to people like you and people like me, for sure. And I keep tabs on it. I keep tabs on that a lot. You know, how much, how important is this sort of thing? Should I get involved? Just back it off. You don't know, those kind of things. Okay, thanks for stopping by. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. If you could take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel? Take another second and hit that like button i'd really appreciate it okay so i'll see you next week and as usual stay safe stay sober and together we can achieve recovery one day at a time recovery is a team sport there's no i in recovery no there's no i in recovery. <laughs> see you later bye for now bye bye bye, bye.